Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Right here, the Florida Georgia game, right? So the most of today, you know what today is according to the Bible? Sabbath. It's the Sabbath. Oh, you knew that. So, so if you know it's the Sabbath, what's supposed to do on the Sabbath? Go to church. Keep it holy. You're supposed to keep the Sabbath day holy. So nobody's going to church right now. You're in church right now. But is, was that your intention when you walked down the street? That was not your intention. Your intention was to enjoy the festival like everybody else doing, right? I was going to get something to eat. Yeah, you're going to go get something to eat on the Sabbath day. Yeah, let's, now let's listen. Right now you get that spiritual meat, right? So let's give you the script, these scriptures about the Sabbath day. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day. First thing God said about the Sabbath day is remember. Because he knew there was going to come a time when we were going to forget the Sabbath day. Because our oppressors told us it was on Sunday. We forgot all about it after that. Because that was that man-made religion saying, nah, the Sabbath day is on Sunday. You, you brothers need to get back to work. You owe me some, you owe me some labor today. You got, you got another 20 hours before you go and rest. You understand that? That's what they said to us on Saturday. Because they moved the Sabbath day to Sunday. But God says, remember the Sabbath day. Once you come back to an understanding of who you are according to the Bible, you got to remember this thing. Read. To keep it holy. You got to keep it holy. It's like, you understand what holy means? Yeah. What does it mean? Righteous. Righteous, it means separate. So the world does certain things on, on our Sabbath day. Because God made the Sabbath for us. But the world does other things. Like right now, the world's out here at the Florida Georgia game, living it up. I didn't like it. There's, there's, not, there's nothing else to do today, right? But this is most high made this day for the Israelites to keep holy, separate from everything else. And these, and these are the things how we keep it holy inside these scriptures right now. Read. Six days shall thou labor. So God said, six days shall we labor. We're going to do work on six days, right? Read. And do all thy work. Do all your work. So six days out of the week, you got all six days to do work. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You got all six of those days to do whatever work you need to get done to make your money in order to be able to live and get things done, accomplished for your nation and for yourself, for your people. You understand that? Read. But the seventh day. But the seventh day, which is special, which is holy, but is separate from all those other days because he didn't adore, uh, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't um, sanctify those days to be special in no type of way, right? Read. It's the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. In it, thou shalt not do any work. You can't do no work. We don't, he didn't mention work three times now, read. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy mad servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, no nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. As a, hey, brothers, right now we're going over the Sabbath day according to the Bible. And what the Most High God said we can do on the Sabbath day. As the Most High God said anybody that's a part of your house, your son, your daughter, your maid servant, the stranger within that gates, and your animals, none of them that you own, because you're an Israelite, and the that falls underneath you, can do anything on the Sabbath day. You understand that? So if, if, we, if we were in rulership, and we own or possess the people below us, that means everybody in that whole house, in that whole city, would not be doing this on the Sabbath day. You understand that? Rick. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, uh -huh. the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Most high God rested on the seventh day. Read. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The Most High is the one that said, on the Sabbath day you will rest. You will keep it holy. You will keep it separate from all of this other foolishness. Give me um, no, um, no, um, um, no buy to sell it. Give me that. Nehemiah. Give me Nehemiah 10. The other thing we're not supposed to do on the Sabbath day, what you see a lot of people doing, is talking about these um, barbecue places, right? They're buying something to eat. 
on the Sabbath day, right? Yeah. They ain't supposed to cook on the Sabbath day. You're supposed to lay it up the day before. So you already understand, they ain't supposed to cook on the Sabbath at all. You're supposed to cook the day before the Sabbath, and by nighttime, once it gets dark, you're supposed to stop all of that. But that's part of your work, right? But on the Sabbath day, you're not allowed to go and buy it neither. So that means somebody else done cooked it. So you can't do that neither. Let's read that. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals. So when they bring victuals, which is food, or victuals, or they bring any wares, which is anything other than food, pots, pans, clothing, uh, pens, banners, flyers, whatever, and they're just telling you to buy it, read. On the Sabbath day read. to sell that we will not buy it of them. Most high God say we ain't supposed to buy those things. We don't buy and sell on the Sabbath day. So you already know you ain't supposed to cook nothing on the Sabbath day. We can't buy and sell on the Sabbath day. So that means as an Israelite, we always got to be prepared to do what we need to do on the Sabbath day. You understand that? All right, James, now let me get on. Let me get your law. Uh, Numbers 15 to 38. Let's get your law so you understand what an Israelite should look like. There's certain laws we have to keep in place. So when you walk around, what, what, you can tell uh, these, these brothers right here with me that we are Israelites, right? If you saw us in a store, you would recognize us as Israelites. Oh, if you saw us in a mall, you recognize us as Israelites. If you saw us working out on the street, you still recognize us as Israelites. How? We're about to show you how you would recognize us. Read. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Hey, bro, right here with the keychain. Hey, we're going over the Sabbath day. You want to talk? Let's talk about the Bible. I want to dialogue with you about the Bible. All right, read. Throughout their generation. God said this, this is going to be throughout our generations. Read that again. Read it from the top. I don't know what James heard it. Read. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generation. You see it already, right? What do you see us wearing? We got fringes on the borders of our garments. And our children have to wear them. Our wives have to wear them. Everybody in our household has to wear these fringes. Why? Because they're Israelites, according to the Bible. And we have to wear it throughout our generation. That means we have to teach our children to wear them. You got any children, James? That means you have to teach your children the same thing. Throughout our generation. We can't stop teaching them. So that's how we that's how we forgot about the Sabbath day in the first place. That's how we forgot who we were in the first place. Hey sis, we're going about we're going over who we are according to the Bible. We're going over who we are according to the Bible. We got five minutes to stop and listen. Hey, you know what? You want to know the real reason why our people refuse to listen to the words of God? Because it has laws. It, tell, it tells them to stop doing what's in the world and do what God says. Do what your father says. But they don't want to repent. They'd rather remain here in Babylon and worry about what Babylon needs instead of worrying about what their people need. They don't care about what God got to say. They care about what their oppressor got to say. And when you ain't doing what the oppressor got to say, then you strange to them. You're not doing what everybody else is doing. We walk different. We want, hey, you know what? Give me, what, what was it? Uh, Esther. Esther chapter 13, verse 4. There it is. Esther chapter 13, verse 4. Let me show you what our own people are saying about us. Not just our own people, but the rest of the people you see out here. You understand what I'm saying? The book of Esther, chapter 13, verse 4. Read. Esther chapter 13, verse 4. Read. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world, there was scattered a certain malicious people. Hey, they called us malicious. They said we angry, we mean. We don't do what everybody else do, and the way we do things is mean. I don't like the how, how you said that to me. All we doing, guess what we're telling them? We tell our women, you gotta dress like a woman. You can't be walking out here with your, with your butt showing, with your chest showing. But then they just call us malicious when we say that type of thing. But the Bible calls it reproof, rebuke, and correction. How else are you, supposed, are you supposed to get right if never, ever, nobody ever tells you you're wrong? They say, you can't judge me. The Bible says, I can judge you. You understand that? Rick. That had laws contrary to all nations. Are not these laws contrary to all the other nations? Does America tell us to put fringes on? Does America tell us to honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy? No, America don't tell us to do that. America said go to church on Sunday. America said let us all blend together. Let's be the same. Don't be different. We don't do what America tells us to do. We do the opposite of what America tells us to do. We're contrary to America. And they ain't gonna like it. Rick. And continually despise the commandment of kings. 
America is follows the commandment of the king. President Obama said it's okay to get married to another man. Is that good? Yeah, I despise that decision. I ain't supposed to honor that. I'm gonna tell my people, no, man and man cannot get together the way man and woman can. Woman and woman cannot get the way together the way man and woman can. That's supposed to be fruit of that union. There's no fruit and no union between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. That thing ain't right. Yes, I despise that decision. I'm not supposed to honor that decision. I'm supposed to keep the laws of God. Read. So as the uniting of our kingdoms, honorably intended by us, cannot go forward. The, 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 they can't unite their kingdom because we refuse to do the things that they want everybody to do. We'd rather listen to the words of God and keep the laws of God than to do all the foolish, heathenish things that they want us to do. We're not, we're gonna not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, what, what do you call it? We're not gonna blend in. We're not gonna uh, assimilate. assimilate. That's what they want us to do. They want us to assimilate and be like everybody else. Why y'all give us so much trouble? Why y'all teaching them the right things to do when we tell you to do this instead? We're not gonna do We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.